What's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Tech Habit Ashery. So I am uh, doing a follow-up video to my Pinebook Pro. Uh, like many other tech tubers uh, in the Linux community, uh, they had done the initial Debian factory and then later went and decided to use Manjaro. Uh, I did the same thing and um, it's a world of difference. It really is. I think a lot of the other folks that I've watched did KDE, a couple did XFCE, and that's the one I went with as well. So um, it's where to start. <laughs> it's it's so much better. Um, so I'll just I'll just talk about my experience with Manjaro. Um, none of the hardware has really changed, so we'll we'll look at mostly on the software side of things. So Wi-Fi seems to work well. Speeds were definitely acceptable. The Wi-Fi radar app shows strong signals in my house, weaker ones from my neighbors, as you would expect. Uh, there seems to be a little bit of a bug, though, where the Wi-Fi radar app only shows all networks as the G-type network, which certainly is not the case. Uh, we should definitely be getting a lot of AC and N-type wireless networks as well. Audio is pretty terrible. I looked into fixing it with an update or adjusting settings. Uh, that didn't seem to help at all. Audio via headphones is perfectly good, though. Uh, whatever you're listening to via wired headsets will definitely also play through the system speakers unless you go in and actually turn the built-in speakers off. Uh, this was a known issue with Manjaro, and initially there was no way to work around it. You just kind of had to deal with it. But Manjaro has added a feature to manually turn off the built-in speakers now, so you can use uh, external speakers or you can use headphones just fine while turning the internal speakers off. With the display, you're not able to change the resolution. This is certainly worse than the factory Debian distribution because at least it could be changed easily. I also tried to install ARANDER, the Arch version of XRANDER, and it made no difference. The only option is the native resolution of 920 by 1080. Of course, you can adjust font sizes, so maybe ultimately a moot point. But uh, given how good of a screen this is, I really don't know if you want to go down from the native resolution. Manjaro Arm has a very good power management panel. CPU throttling appears to be very well implemented. HTOP allows us to see when all of the cores are being run and when they aren't. For example, just editing a Word doc in Google Docs, the CPU throttles down quite nicely. And when playing 1080p YouTube video, the CPU is more heavily taxed, but it's not utterly maxed out. There also seems to be an issue, and this is an intermittent issue, and is not is more uncommon than common in that most of the time this does not occur. Sometimes, when I reboot the system, the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth do not automatically reconnect. Most of the time they do just sometimes they don't. I've saved the connection using the nmcli command via the terminal and it's still a little inconsistent at boot up. Um, so not sure what's going on with that but when they do work they work perfectly well. There also seems to be an issue with enabling sleep mode in Manjaro XFCE. Uh, the settings are present in the control panel but it doesn't appear that they actually put the system to sleep they just turn off the screen and it doesn't appear to lock the screen either after some more testing and a little research it seems that it's due to not having a proper swap partition so using a little pseudo foo i created a swap partition and tested the sleep performance again including adding it to fs tab so it would be enabled at startup and unfortunately that did not solve the issue the system still just eventually powers off or it only turns off the screen. At no point does it ever actually lock the screen. 
webcam and microphone performance are still terrible. Um, that is to say, the microphone doesn't seem to work at all. USB microphones and web cameras are perfectly fine, however, so this is simply a hardware limitation of the built-in system devices. Anything that you use externally appears to work perfectly well. There is one thing about Manjaro that I miss having from the factory OS, and that's the CPU freak util that uh, is missing on here, and so I don't have a way of really guaranteeing that all of the CPUs that support the 2 gigahertz frequency would run at 2 gigahertz. Uh, the power utility only sees four cores at 1.42 gigahertz maximum, so I left the CPU frequency at the on-demand setting for doing benchmarking. Let's start with YouTube, as I think there's going to be a lot of folks using this for YouTube watching. I, I don't know that you'll be doing much else with it. Um, YouTube playback is far, far better than the factory Debian OS. There is a major, and I mean major, performance increase on YouTube playback with this device running Manjaro. 1080p 30 frames per second playback is just about perfect. 1080p 60 has some fro dropped frames and will occasionally pause playback in order to buffer, but that's very occasional, and as kernel updates have come out, uh, that's actually gotten better over time. I've also had no issues with 720p60, so if you prefer video consistency over resolution, stick with 720p60 or 1080p30. Otherwise, just be aware of the little bit of a hiccup or a stutter under 1080p60. I think it's safe to say that GPU acceleration is working just fine and properly under Manjaro. For a little bit of benchmarking on this, running Chromium and on a 10 hour video, I got 6 hours and 43 minutes of battery life. Under Firefox, I got 5 hours and 50 minutes. So it's a little bit better than what we were getting under the Debian. Um, I'm really surprised at the Chromium performance. We got almost an hour longer battery runtime under Manjaro than we did under Debian. So that's cool. I'm still ultimately saying that this is a serious improvement just because the performance playback is so much better under Manjaro, even though the battery life under Firefox is still right about six hours. Okay, let's get into some of the Pharonix test suite benchmarks. So for CPU testing, uh, we tried, or I tried with a lame MP3 encoding under Manjaro ARM that completed in 91.75 seconds compared to the factory 31.532 seconds. So under Debian, we're looking at almost three times as fast. I think that has to do with the fact that Manjaro doesn't seem to be using those that pair of high frequency two gigahertz cores. So the system has six CPUs, two of which run at two gigahertz, the other four max out at 1.5. I don't think Manjaro's load balancing that correctly so that's my assumption as to why it's so much better under the factory os than under manjaro our next test is the graphics magic benchmark i ran all tests under this because the factory debian os was not able to run this at all it failed every single time i ran it but manjaro did complete it it got 146 iterations per minute the cl next closest thing I had to measure it against was my little Dell 3180 laptop, which got 67 iterations a minute. So this system for that particular benchmark is twice as fast as the Dell. I tried to run the Geeks Lab uh, graphics test um, under Manjaro ARM. It's not supported. The factory Debian OS, it just failed to run altogether. Um, I couldn't get any of the graphics tests to run, actually. A lot of them are based uh, on x86 applications and games, so I didn't want to go through all of them. I went through maybe a half dozen, couldn't find one that worked, so I really don't have a good way of quantifying what the graphics performance of the system under Manjaro ARM is. For disk testing, that's the built-in eMMC storage, uh, I went ahead and ran Flexible I.O. Tester. 
I ran both random read and random writes. We used the Linux AIO. We used unbuffered. We did direct writes at one megabyte. So for Manjaro, we got 170 megabytes per second and 170 IOPS, that's input-output operations, on the read which compares to the factory OS of 158 megabytes per second and 155 IOPS. When writing, we did 63.3 megabytes per second and 60 IOPS under Manjaro, while we did 64.3 megabytes a second and 61 IOPS under Debian. So I'm going to say that's effectively the same. Minor variance on the read, just a little bit faster, but otherwise... Disk performance is the same for both Debian, the factory Debian, and Manjaro. For the next disk test, I ran SQLite under 32 threads. Under Manjaro ARM, we got the test completion at 661.58 seconds. Under the factory Debian, we got 279.663 seconds. So, again, more than double the length of time for Manjaro to complete this test. I, I don't know what happens on the Debian side. I, again, I think it has to do with the way that Mr. Fix IT tweaked his Debian OS, the f former factory OS, to use those two big cores properly. So for memory testing, I ran T-Test 1, two threads, under Manjaro ARM, we got 36.87 seconds. Under the factory OS, we got 61.657 seconds. So not quite twice as fast under Manjaro, uh, but it's interesting that it handles memory allocation so much more efficiently than the Debian OS. It might explain why we had a lot of performance issues with the factory OS, being that if the factory OS can utilize the processors more efficiently in terms of being able to actually ramp up the CPU frequency, but it's not able to as efficiently allocate and manage the RAM, that could explain where issues with things like YouTube playback came in. Not sure. That could also be hardware acceleration. I don't think hardware acceleration was turned on for the factory Debian OS, and while I do think it's turned on for Manjaro. Anyway, those are just guesses. The tests are interesting because in some ways Manjaro performs significantly better, such as with the uh, T-test for the RAM um, and for the CPU test under Graphics Magic. However, other tests were seriously slower, like Lame MP3 encoding and SQLite. I reran both Lame MP3 and SQLite tests to see if the results were any different, and they weren't. I forced the CPU governor to performance mode, but again, saw no difference. Uh, for the rerun under Lame MP3, I got 91.118 seconds, and SQL Lite or SQLite got 687 seconds, so almost identical to what we saw with the system auto-managing the CPU power. Okay, one other little thing I want to address, and this is not a really related to the OS at all, but while I was doing this, I did decide to go ahead and order a new charger from Pine64, and the one that I got in to replace the factory, uh, or at least the charger that came with the laptop when I ordered it, uh, this charger does actually work, so I'm very happy that the issue was the charger and not the Pinebook Pro itself. Um, that's a major relief, and it goes a long way to improving my feelings regarding the Pinebook Pro. So that's it. I really don't have much else to say, uh, since this is just really a follow-up and more, again, more for software than the hardware side of things. Obviously, there's some things about the hardware that have not changed, um, but the overall system usability certainly has. I hope you've gathered that much from this video. Um, the webcam and the microphone are, unfortunately, that's a, a lost cause. Uh, they leave a lot to be desired, but USB devices work perfectly fine, so go with a USB device if you want to do any webcam or microphone work. Um, the speakers under Manjaro are uh, much worse than the uh, former 
Debian or former factory Debian OS that came on here. Those actually, uh, whatever tweaking uh, Mr. Fix IT did, uh, certainly was much better under Debian than the whatever the Manjaro team has put together. Um, so they're just they're just really quiet. They're really tinny, and they get blown out far too quickly if you actually push them up to the max. Um, I don't really know that I have any other complaints to offer. Uh, I'd like to get the lock screen working. Um, I'd like to get the sleep and wake function working properly as well, but those aren't deal breakers. Sorry about the dog. Uh, in every other way, you know, video playback, system responsiveness, Bluetooth wireless connectivity, um, battery life, touchpad accuracy, all of that is just plain and simple, just way better under Manjaro. And I think that I don't really have to make too much of an argument for that because Pine64 is themselves uh, with new Pinebook Pros that are being purchased uh, starting here in March. Um, they'll begin shipping in May. We'll have Manjaro KDE as the default factory OS. So that being said, go out there, get yourself a Pinebook Pro with Manjaro on it. Thanks for watching, y'all. Have a good one. Oh, and one other thing I almost completely forgot about. I got the solid state drive adapter for the Pinebook Pro and a solid state drive. Uh, it's not the most high performance solid state drive, but this is not the most high performance laptop. So take it for, for what you will. But I'm expecting to see some noticeable and appreciable gains with this. So expect a video on that in the future.